Yo, what is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Sports Scoop. Today, I'm going to be doing my first 2023 NFL mock draft, the first for all of the Sports Scoop. So basically, what I'm going to be doing is basically what I just said. I'm going to be going through the first round of the NFL mock draft and make my pick. I'm not fully familiar with all of the prospects yet, but I'm going to kind of try and do my best based on kind of team fit and the guys that I have scouted so far. So if you enjoy, make sure to like and subscribe. We will be doing a lot more NFL content and mock draft content too. So make sure to check all of that out. So starting off with the first overall pick, you got the Houston Texans and the Texans, obviously right now on paper, they're the worst team in the NFL. But if you look at their team, a lot of the games they've lost have been very, very close games. And I think a lot of the games that they've lost also, really, they aren't actually that far away. They've got a good defense, and they've got an offensive line that isn't, like, terrible. It's capable. I think what they mainly need to address is the quarterback position and the receiver position. Luckily, they have the first overall pick, and I think they should take Bryce Young out of... Oh, I need to start of the draft. Bear with me. I would take, if I were the Texans, Bryce Young. I think he is my QB1 prospect. Obviously, Stroud is great too, but Young just combines that brilliant anticipation, solid mobility, and just amazing accuracy at Alabama. And he's done it without the same weapons that previous Alabama QBs have had, like Jalen Hurts and Tua. They've had both had great weapons. Bryce Young really hasn't had that same luxury, and yet he's produced very well. He was the Heisman winner last year. So I think he's definitely worthy of the first overall pick, and he definitely, I think he sees the field very well, and he's absolutely an NFL-ready prospect. So he would be my first overall pick. Now going on to the second pick, you got the Las Vegas Raiders, and they are between two guys. I would go with Will Anderson from... Alabama. So the top two picks, both Alabama kids. And I think Will Anderson, he would have been the best, even with Hutchinson there, even with Thibodeau, even with Walker, he would have easily been the best edge prospect there. He, he is basically screams number one overall picks, franchise edge rusher. And Las Vegas, they've already got Max Crosby, but Chandler Jones is aging. It really isn't the same guy. Why not get a guy like Will Anderson who can completely turn around that defense and make it one of the most feared front sevens in the league just with him and Max Crosby. So I think that it's almost a no-brainer pick. Maybe if they're going bold, they want to get their QB of the future, they could go Stroud, but I think Will Anderson is the best pick there. But I will take CJ Stroud with third overall pick for the Carolina Panthers. And I think with um with the Panthers, obviously, they have they have a lot of issues. In my opinion, I think they're them, I think they're pretty close to the worst team in the league. I think obviously, I think offensively they're carried by Deontay Foreman now that he's um now that McCaffrey's gone. And really the offense just it isn't that good. They don't really have a true quarterback, so I think they need to get C.J. Stroud there. They just have Foreman and D.J. Moore, so they're got they're going to probably need to add a lot more than just a QB. But Stroud, obviously, you need to get your franchise guy, and I think that's what that's really what Stroud offers. So, yeah, I think he, I think he's probably the most the safest bet here. And I think, um, looking at the rest of the board, there's no one else really I would take here other than C.J. Stroud. But I think obviously he has great size, good accuracy. A lot of people say he's a first-three quarterback, but I think that's something he could easily develop if he's in the right system. If Carolina build the right system around him with whoever their coach is, I think they should be. I think he should be in a good situation to be a very good quarterback. Now going on to the fourth pick, you have the Philadelphia Eagles, and a team like the Eagles should not be picking fourth because they are so stacked across the board. But that's what New Orleans Saints they just gave them the fourth overall pick at least right now. And I would probably go edge. I'm going to go Miles Murphy from Clemson. Kind of going to just solidify that defensive line they've got a couple of aging pieces there Derek Barnett coming off an Achilles injury and Brandon Graham is isn't exactly young and you've got other guys like Josh Sweat and Hassan Reddick which really shows how stacked this team is you can't really find a weakness I would take Miles Murphy though I think his potential is sky high and he could be edge one there very quickly if he lives up to his potential so Miles Murphy for the Eagles the fifth pick you got the Jacksonville Jaguars um I think now you gotta get Trevor Lawrence some um protection because they've already gotten him some help. They've got Calvin Ridley, they got Christian Kirk in the offseason, they got other guys like Zay Jones and um uh Marvin Marvin Jones also. So I think what they mainly need now is to get some protection. So I would take Peter Skurinsky or actually, actually, I'm gonna take Jalen Carter because he is arguably some people would say he's the best player in the draft. And honestly, you can't blame him. He was literally he was arguably the best player on a and truly a truly elite Georgia defense last year that carried not carried, but basically did all the heavy lifting for Georgia to win the national championship. And Jalen Carter can be that kind of fran um franchise guy, which you don't often see from a defensive lineman, but him, Trayvon Walker, Josh Allen, um 
And then other solid rotational guys like Fadakasi, Arden Key, I think that should be a very fearful front line when the Jags already have a pretty solid defense, but Carter could make that elite. He is an insane prospect for the Bears. Now, now do you maybe maybe take Skrinsky, maybe take a wide receiver? It's tough here because you got to get Fields some help, but you already you did get him Chase Claypool. I w- I would be interested to see what they do in free agency. Also, this is a it's a tough pick. I'm gonna go with Jordan Addison. He is my receiver one. The um he was the um play um wide receiver of the year, the best receiver in all of college football last year at Pitt. Transferred to USC. He's still been very good. He's my receiver one. I think he. Um, kind of gives Fields. I think Claypool is good, but he's not a number one receiver. Get Fields that kind of guy that he can consistently rely and trust, and I think that's what Jordan Addison will be from the get go. So that's my sixth overall pick, seventh pick for the Seattle Seahawks. Um, maybe you go Brian Brees here, another defensive lineman. Uh, not going quarterback. I'm sorry, and also I'm not really high on Will Levis. I'm gonna go Brian Brees here. I think um the Seahawks obviously they've drafted good. They've uh, at edge rusher. They already got Wosu. They got they drafted Boye Mafe and interior not necessarily bad. They got Shelby Harris. Um, a couple other okay guys, but I think Brian Brees again another guy with a a higher ceiling than those guys, and just another guy you can bring into a Seattle defense that is that can continue to develop and become much much better than it already is. And I think Brian Brees is just another piece that could really help that um that team for sure. Now going to the eighth pick, you got the Detroit Lions and. They won the past two games, which is good for them, but they're now kind of out of QB range. Again, like I said, Will Leavis, in my opinion, isn't worth the top 10 pick. I would go with corner Keely Ringo here. I think he's got great size, great strength. He's played in the SEC, so he's very battle-tested. Again, on that vaunted Georgia defense. Um, Lions, they've had a, a sort of a resurgence from Jeff Okuda, which is good, but overall that pass defense is not good enough, and they need to get a corner to sure that up. They've already addressed edge in the draft with – um Hutchinson and Pascal. So I think now it's time to get a real, real good corner. I think that's what Keely Ringo could be. So I think that's worth the investment there. Ninth pick for the Texans. Um it's a tough one. It's a tough ones between two receivers. I will go with Quinton Johnson just because I'm a huge fan of his his skill set. He's um very big, good route runner. He can he can win in a multiple uh, multitude of ways, and I think that's again what um the Texans offense will need. That's what Bryce Young will need from the get go. Again, I don't think the Texans are that far off. I think they need kind of two of the most important pieces: a good QB and a good receiver. I think that's what Bryce Young, Quinn, and Johnson. If they can click, that's that's kind of a scary offense at Houston. Obviously, they probably are losing Brandon Cooks, but they're also getting John Mechie back. Um, you got obviously drafting Quinn Johnson. You got uh, Nico Collins. So I think. They're starting to build a foundation there in Houston. So I think that is kind of a make sense pick. Obviously, you can also go Jackson Smith and Jigba, but he hasn't really put up the stats to kind of convince me that Johnson has. He's been pretty solid this year with a much worse offense than TCU. So Johnson's the pick there. Tenth pick for the Pittsburgh Steelers, who kind of they've been doing a lot better the past few weeks. Now I think they got to dress offensive line. Peter Skarinski, offensive tackle. He can also play guard. The Steelers really kind of just need to get that help. Need to get that um offense a lot of um offensive line a lot of help because they are really struggling they've been very very poor for the past few seasons and i think that's really what skorinski um he offers he offers protection obviously at tackle we also he's a pretty solid guard so i think a versatile piece someone who can also again generally good protector so i would say skorinski with the 10th pick back to the lines at 11 with the rams really struggling lines like that there um hmm you could, I think you could take a risk on Anthony Richardson here. I think you could take a, I think I would not blame that off for kind of trying to do that. Um, hmm. So it's, it's an interesting situation. They could go Michael Meyer. Obviously they did trade away. Um, CJ Hawkinson. I think, um, as I go down the list, I'm going to go a bit further down. I'm going to go with, um, I'm going to go with, no, not Trent Simpson. I'm going to go, no, I know. I'm going to go with Felix on the DK Ozama. I know they, I did say they addressed edge, but I think they can again. Um, I think I really like on DK Ozama, and I think he could kind of be another rotating edge piece again. Like I said, they did draft 
Pascal and they've got Okwara, but I think those both of those guys are kind of rotational pieces. And now Diko Zama can either be that guy who can pair up with Hutchinson or he can be another rotational guy there. So um yeah, I think I think that's a solid pick there for um the Lions. I like Enadiko Zama and I think um the Lions need all the defensive help they can get. They're getting, they've got really good weapons on offense. I just don't think it's worth the time of taking quarterback yet. So I'd go Anadiko Zama there. 12th pick with the Detroit Lions, um, not the Detroit Lions, now the Atlanta Falcons. Um, Another another interesting spot. They could go Joy Porter. They could go corner. I'm going to go Tyree Wilson, though. I'm going to go Tyree Wilson kind of to help pair up with, um, to help pair up with Arnold Ebikitia, who has been having a very solid year. Um, I think um Falcons, they're starting to build up an a semblance of a defense. Obviously, they've got Terrell, they've got um, I believe Casey Hayward is there. I believe he is. And I think they do they do need a bit more help on the defensive line. And Taylor, uh Tyree Wilson, a pretty versatile player, can play defensive line, can play edge. And I think that kind of just fits up what the Falcons are doing. I think you could really again be a just another piece of the defense. Uh, 13th pick got the Arizona Cardinals, who they need offensive line help. They um absolutely, I think they need offensive line help. They are um they've got they've got pieces. They got pieces on the offensive side of the ball. They got Kyler, they got um James Conner, they got receivers like D Hop, Marquise Brown, Rondale Moore. I wouldn't really say Robbie Anderson. He struggled this year, but I think they need that offensive line. They need to build that up. Who do you go here? I'm gonna go with Paris Johnson. I think I like. I think he's kind of pretty pro ready. He's um on us. He's a really good piece on the solid off um Ohio State offensive line, and I think again, um just another real guy is gonna be a plug and play there. And yeah, that's what I have to say about that one. Fourteenth pick got the Green Bay Packers getting a win against the Cowboys, but they're probably gonna be around this range based on how they're playing this season if they um stay on the pace that they're going on. Um an interesting one i'm gonna oh no take jackson smith and jigba um i think the packers have for too long ignored that receiver one position smith and jigba someone who might go into the slot um i think um that's perfectly fine and i think it kind of adds another bit of a compliment to a, a young but starting to develop packers receiving core with romeo Dobbs and christian watson who had maybe his breakout game against the cowboys so um, Smith and Jigba, they still need to get that guy who potentially be a number one. I mean, they have some guys who potentially be one, but I think Smith and Jigba offers a pretty high floor. So I think um makes sense for um whoever the Packers quarterback it is, whether or not it's Aaron Rodgers, but they need to get that receiver one. I think that's what Smith and Jigba offers. 15th pick, you got the Indianapolis Colts. This is where I'm gonna go, Anthony Richardson. Um yeah, Will Lewis. I know he's high up here, but I and he has tools, so I think he might be worth the first round pick, but the way he's played, especially against Vanderbilt that last game, he just hasn't shown enough to be um an early first round pick. And Anthony Richardson, he has those tools and he's done probably better than Will Levis has. And I think he's really kind of worth the Colts kind of trying to find their eventual answer at quarterback. Um maybe they can get they'll probably trade for another guy for like a second or a third or a fourth round pick and kind of just make it work for a year while they let Richardson develop. And that makes sense because the Colts need to find their eventual answer to that quarterback carousel that they've been having. I think Richardson's a potential guy who um let him sit, let him learn. And if you reach its potential, that is very, very scary. So Richardson to the Colts, 16th pick, you got the Washington Commanders. Um I think they go Joey Porter here. Um, obviously they, um, they cut William Jackson, I believe they cut William Jackson and the commanders really now kind of need that, um, opposite corner to Kendall Fuller. And I think that's what Joey Porter offers. He's been good at Penn state. Obviously you could have, um, other, op- you know, other options like Clam, um, Cam Smith, Clark Phillips, Christian Gonzalez. I like all those guys, but I think Porter is probably my favorite. So I would take him for the commanders there. Chargers at 17. Mm. They could go receiver, I think, but I, they're going to be getting their guys back. So I think it, mm, they could actually, I, I kind of do like um, Keishon Butte to, um, to the Chargers. Uh, I'm going to go, I'm looking across, I'm looking across um, the EO line. Um, I'm going to go Cam Smith. I'm going to go Cam Smith. Um, I think 
The Chargers, obviously, um, they got Asante Samuel Jr. has been having a solid year, but J.C. Jackson just ruptured his Achilles, and honestly, he has not looked like a good fit at all in that Chargers defense. So I think why not try and get someone from the draft to develop? Cam Smith has got long arms. He's a good um, long arms. He's a good um, pre- um, he's a pretty like he's a sticky corner. So I think um, he's someone really that um, the Chargers could get kind of again came from the same school that jc horn came from i think they could kind of get him try and develop him into a solid number one corner there um 18th pick you got the cincinnati Bengals. i think they go do they go michael meyer here they got um hurst on a one-year deal that um hate yeah hayden hurst on a one-year deal i think they go i think they go isaiah foxy from um from notre dame uh they need um, Ed, they, I think they need a bit more edge help. I think Trey Hendrickson, he's got, I think he's got one or two years left. Um, I might be, I'm, I might be wrong, but Sam Hubbard, I think, is okay. So I think why not kind of try and add to that, um, pass rush and give Joe Burrow and that offense that we know is going to be electrical a bit more help. So I think that is a viable pick there. 19th pick for the Buccaneers. This is surely Brady's last season. Um, I think the more I, the more I think about it, I think they might they might try and take a shot on um on Bijan um Bijan Robinson. Actually, I think they'll address the offensive line first. I think they'll take Osiris Terence. He's had um a good season, solid run blocker. And with Ali Marpet retiring, I know they did try and address that with Shaq um Mason, but I think they still need a bit more help on that offensive line. I think that's what um is. I think it's a good way to address it. Obviously, they lost both of their guards. So I think um, they got Jack Mason, but I think they can address that a bit more with the pick of Osiris Terrans. Obviously, from the Florida area, makes sense for the Bucks. 20th pick, you've got the Denver Broncos. They just need offensive help. They need offensive help. That defense is good. I mean, they could take a – actually, they could take an edge. They could take an edge, obviously, but I think – um, they've got Baron Browning developing. They still got Randy Gregory. Don't forget, they've got um, they've got a good they've got a good defense, the best defense in football. But they need offensive help. Do they go quarterback? Hmm. Do they go quarterback? I think that I think they go offensive line. I would take uh, oh, um, no, no, I say I'll say Fashanu. Oh, like Fashanu. He is only nineteen right now. He's still developing. It might take him a year to fully get app- acclimated. But I think the Denver Broncos absolutely would take it if he can be a franchise tackle for them. They need offensive line help desperately. I think that really um at least starts semblance of help because I um a semblance of help because the Broncos, they're probably gonna I don't think they'll roll with Hackett. I think they'll still kind of try and salvage it with a better, a hopefully better play caller, and they're gonna try and probably um improve the personnel on the offensive line. I think that's what Fashano does. 21st pick, you got the New England Patriots. Um yeah, they're it's the same old Patriots. Good defense, solid run game. Um, quarterback is again, it's been an uncertainty since Brady. Um, but Mac Jones, obviously, they still believe that's their guy. They could go receiver. I think they could go Kayshawn Butte, but I think with Belichick, they'll go Trenton Simpson. Kind of continue to build up that de- defense, so it's a top, a consistently top ten, top five defense. So. It's just it's just a pick that makes sense in my opinion, um, and it's a um a good value pick, and it, it just again adds more and more riches to that Patriots defense. Twenty second pick, you got the Seattle Seahawks. Um, hmm, Seahawks. Uh, I think they go. They could they could go cornerback because I think um they've got they got Tariq Woolen who is already an elite cornerback which is crazy, but Kobe Bryant he's he's forced a lot of fumbles he's um done a good job kind of forcing those turnovers but he hasn't been a great um coverage corner but I think maybe they'll probably hope he can develop into a better one soon, um, I think they go. Hmm. This is a tough one. I think the Seahawks will probably try and go. Um, do they go edge? Do they go edge? I think they. Um, I think they'll go with um, Antonio Johnson from Texas. Oops, 
I think they'll go Antonio Johnson from Texas A&M. Again, this could be a terrible pick. Let me know if it is. But, um, again, just another guy who's versatile on the back end of the secondary. Obviously, he's a safety. He can also play as a nickel. Um, I think it's just another um, really good piece to a Seahawks defense that, surprisingly, somehow the Seahawks don't really have that many weaknesses because they built up that um, built up that offense so well already. And I think that's just – I think it's, I think it's just a um, – another uh a team that can make this Seahawks even potentially top 10 next year for sure now you got the New York Jets at 23rd my New York Jets feels good picking this late in the draft at least right now um for the Jets I think they go Broderick Jones um the Jets are probably not going to retain George Fant and I think um it's possible Dwayne Brown also retires, which means they'll have a need probably at left tackle and Broderick Jones, one of the top four offensive tackles in this draft. And I think it absolutely makes sense for the Jets to kind of scoop him up, plug and play guy. 24th pick, you got the Buffalo Bills. Um, They could splash on running back. I think they maybe try, they try and go all in with the running back, but maybe the, I think they might try and continue to build up that, um try and build up the offensive line because it has been, Eh, it's in oh it's been so so I wouldn't say there's anyone there though that's worth a first round pick. I think they go actually I think they go Brian Branch from Alabama because um I think either Poyer or Hyde, one of them is um I think it's Poyer, yeah. Poyer is a, is a pending free agent and Hyde obviously out for the season. I think Buffalo kind of want to retain that strength at the back end. I think they're gonna kind of try and fix that with Brian Branch. Also, if they do re-sign Poyer, it gives them those potential three safety looks. And I think it's um it just um the Buffalo they want to keep that um that secondary strong and kind of also they want to add probably Tep after they've had a lot of injuries in the secondary this year. So I'd say Brian Branch makes sense. It's a very McDermott pick. So I'd say that for the Bills. 25th pick for the Baltimore Ravens. Um I think they go Keisha on Butte because but the Ravens, they're just consistently, continuously ignoring that. Not necessarily ignoring, but they just don't have that receiver one. They're going to have to keep trying. They've got Rashad Bateman, who saw his potential to be that guy, but he's out for the season. And he's he looks solid. He looks like a good receiver. I don't know if he's a receiver one. Add Butte to, to that room really helps them a lot. And him, DuVernay, and Bateman... It could be, it would be a much, I don't know if it's a great receiver core, but it's definitely much better than Lamar's ever worked with. So I think I'd say 25th pick, Butte makes sense there. 26th pick now for the Tennessee Titans. Um, Titans, I think this, um, probably a running back is a suggested pick. But for the Titans, I think they would go, um, they did lose Harold Landry for the season, so I think they'd go Nolan Smith just to kind of um, sure up that defensive line. Obviously, they've already got Jeffrey Simmons, Nico, uh, Danico Autry, but Bud Dupree really hasn't lived up to the hype there, and they're having Harold Landry come off um, an ACL injury, so I think they're going to kind of try and add to that a little bit more, keep that defense really good, and I think that's what, um, where Nolan Smith steps in, and he's going to be a... Um, a very solid piece for them there as he has been really again for an elite Georgia defense 27th pick now for the Dallas Cowboys. Do they make a splash on Bijan Robinson? I think that's a, there's a, I have a weird feeling they could do that, but I think they already, I think they're confident in Pollard and they're confident in Zeke. So I don't think they would. I think they would take Michael Meyer. You have Dalton Schultz who is a pending free agent. And I think it just adds again. Um, Dallas really want to kind of have that, um, a luxury of riches in that um in that overall um room of weapons and I think Michael Meyer just adds to that and is it just a direct replacement for Dalton Schultz who could potentially be even better than him. So makes sense there. 28th pick you got the New York Giants crazy they're at 28th. Um which I have also um obviously it's great that they're winning. Um they're picking so late so they still have issues that they need to address. I would say they take Christian Gonzalez. Uh they need a receiver one, but do you take anyone from here? Maybe Josh Downs. Actually, I'm going to go Josh Downs for them. They still they need a receiver, and I don't really think it's that much a reach. I don't think he's the 39th plus player in this class. And it's just um, it's a weapon to help Daniel Jones, someone who is going to step in there, and it's going to be instantly better than guys like Marcus Johnson and um, Jericho Sims, I think. I'm not 100% sure who's there. Obviously, Slane, Slane's there. Galladay has been terrible. 
So Josh Downs is going to step there, step in there, and he's immediately going to get a lot of playing time, and it's going to be much needed help for the Giants. So I'd say Josh Downs to New York, 29th pick. You've got the Minnesota Vikings. Um, they've been having a great season. I think they could use some help at the back end. So I'll take Christian Gonzalez for them. Um, 30th pick, the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, I think they go BJ, um, Jared versus or BJ Ojolari. I'm going to go BJ Ojolari because, um, Chiefs, they drafted George Karloftis. I like that. Frank Clark really hasn't been producing at, at a great level. And I think the Chiefs really kind of, they know that their quarterback can, be elite with whoever they put out at receiver. So they're going to just try and kind of sure up that defense. And obviously a guy like um, a guy like um, BJ Ojalari is definitely going to help that four, three front 31st pick. Now you go back to the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, hmm. Eagles again, it's just so hard to find out. Oh, they're going to take B. John Robinson and just be absolutely insane because that off that run blocking offensive line is an insane and pair pair it up with, one of the best running back prospects. Again, I think Bijan could go earlier, but I think with a lot of these teams, a common theme you see is that they have bigger needs than running back, and they need to address those first. That's why I think he could he could go very, very high. It wouldn't surprise me if he goes as high as late first half of the first round. I wouldn't surprise me at all, but I just think with all these teams, I just see specific needs that they need to address before running back with the Eagles. They have everything, so why not take one of the best running back prospects? He would have been the best running back prospect um, last year, and that's saying something considering they had really good ones like Brees Hall and Kenneth Walker, but Bijan Robinson, he is a special prospect, and the Eagles paired up with him. That is dangerous. And finally, got the 32nd pick, which is actually the first pick of the second round, just because Miami were taken, um, had a pick taken away from them. And um, I think they take Jared Verse. I like him. Um, I like him from Florida State. Um, some people they Saw so some people they have him in the top half. Um, I think he could very well be that guy. And I think it caps up a very good draft for the Texans because they get their QB of the future, their potential receiver one of the future, and they add to that edge, um, that edge room with already Jonathan Grenard and can really help that defense, which is already pretty solid to be a very, very good defense. So um I think overall it's a um a great draft for the Texans, and that is um, that's it for the video. And if you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe again. Sorry, I don't know too much on the prospects yet. I promise you the next one I'm doing, I'm going to know a lot more about all these players. But right now, I'm kind of just giving the insight that I have on the players, and more importantly, the insight on what each team needs. So that is it for the video. If you enjoy, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.